As the exam day approaches, you need to know all the formulas involved in physics so that when you see a question, you can be able to say, this is where the question is coming from. I am up here because of a candidate that requested that she make a video on more formulas, particularly on field. And that is why I'm here. If you are watching this video for the first time, I have not subscribed to this channel. You have a lot to gain. If there's any topic that you feel you needed a review for you to be able to know before you write the exam, just drop it in the comment section and I will do just that. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. The first topic we are going to look at now is gravitational field. Now, under gravitational field, these are the formulas that you need to know that is a compulsory that you need to know because questions must come from there. The first one is what? F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay? Next one is F equals G M1 M2 over what? R squared. The F is gravitational force. G is gravitational constant. We have the two masses and we have the radius. Exactly. Then we also know that acceleration due to gravity, G, can also be known as what? Gravitational field intensity. So don't get it confused. Gravitational field intensity, even though it is not in your textbook, it is equal to what? F over what? M. That is the force over mass. So in case I ask to calculate the gravitational field intensity. Now the next one is what? F equals to 1 over R squared. The law of universal gravitation is an inverse square law. So this is an example of an inverse square law. In case you see it in your theory question. Now, it is equal to 1 over R squared. In this concept, you are going to use it when there is no gravitational constant or masses. And you have just the force and the radius. Do we understand? Okay. Coming to the fourth one, it's what? On escape velocity. Escape velocity. V VE equals root of 2GR. Right? Okay. The fifth one is for you to know that the acceleration due to gravity of the earth is equals to gme over re square do you understand this is a situation whereby you have only one mass and you're asked to find the acceleration due to what gravity and remember that this formula and this is what is still the same by the time you divide this force which is gm1 m2 over r square by m you're going to obtain this one I hope that is clear. There is no other question you are going to expect in calculation involving gravitational field and it cannot run within these formulas. So we should note that F is gravitational force, G is gravitational constant, M, they are masses, okay, R is distance, G is acceleration due to gravity, and VE is escape velocity. Let's go to this electric field. The first formula you are going to note in this electric field is what? F, which is electric force, right? Is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R square. Okay? Now, you should know Coulomb's law because it is from Coulomb's law that we derive this equation. Okay? K is electric constant and is also equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Right? Now, Q1, Q2, they are charges and R is the distance between them. Is that clear? Now, the second formula is what? E, which is electric field intensity. Electric field intensity, E, is defined as the force experienced by a unit positive charge. That is, in a nutshell, we can say that electric field intensity e is equal to force over what? Charge. Okay? Now, because it is force over charge, the unit of electric field intensity is Newton per coulombs. Newton is for force and coulomb is for what? Charge. Okay? Now, we also know that there is a relationship connecting electric field intensity and electric potential. So, let's go to electric potential. So, V, which is equation 3, V is equal to work done over what? Charge, right? Now, we can also say that it is equal to electric field intensity multiplied by what? Distance. This is distance. This is electric field intensity multiplied by what? Distance. In case I ask to calculate the electric potential or even electric field intensity, I have these values. You can actually get your answer. I hope that is clear. All right, so coming to the next one, we have what? Capacitance of a capacitor. So the definition is what? Capacitance of a capacitor is the ratio of the quantity of charge to the PD between the two plates, right? Okay, so we can say that this is Q over what? V, right? Then capacitance of a capacitor can also be related with this formula, that is epsilon zero area divided by what? D. In case these parameters I'm giving, I've solved most of these videos in my channel. So don't forget to go there and check it up in case you want to know how we applied all these formulas. I hope that is clear. Now, the next one is for you to know how we can arrange these capacitors in series. Now, if they are connected in series, what are we going to do? You know what is series connection? That is when they are connected in a straight line. What you are going to do is to say that the effective capacitance is what 
1 over c total equals 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 plus 1 over c3. I hope that is clear. Now, when they are connected in parallel, it becomes c total is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3. I hope that is clear. All right. Then looking at the energy stored or the work done in a capacitor, that is the energy stored or work done in a capacitor. We have these three formulas, so you have to note them. Whichever one that you are given, you can be able to pick up from that one and solve your problem. Okay? Then it is equal to half CV square or half QV or half Q square over C. So these are the formulas that you need to know under energy stored or work done in a capacitor. Is that clear? So these are the questions, these are the formulas you need to memorize you need, before you write your exam. I hope that is clear. Now the parameters, you have the F is what? Electric force. Then the K is what? Electric constant. Q is charge or Q is uh, charges. Then we have R is what? Distance. Okay. We have E as electric field intensity and we have V as electric potential. We openly have C as capacitance of a capacitor and we have W as work done. I hope that is clear. These are the formulas you need to note on questions involving magnetic field. So let's go. The first formula, which is the magnetic force is equal to QVB sine theta, where F is the magnetic force, Q is the charge, V is the velocity, and B is the magnetic field measured in Tesla. T is the angle between V and what? B. Now you must note, if V and B they are acting in the same direction. That means they are parallel to each other. Theta equals what? Zero. So if V and what? B, they are what? Parallel. If they are parallel, sorry, this is parallel. It means that theta is equals what? Zero. And when theta is equals to zero, automatically the magnetic force equals what? Zero. But if V and B, they are what? perpendicular sorry perpendicular right it means that theta is equal to 90 degrees i hope that is clear if theta is 90 degrees that means the maximum magnetic force is obtained at that point i hope that is clear the force on a conductor of length l carrying a current in a magnetic field b is equals to bl what is b magnetic field what is I? Current. And what is L? Length of the conductor. I hope that is clear. If B and I are parallel to each other, that means that the force, the magnetic force equals what? Zero. But if B and I are, are perpendicular to each other, that means that the magnetic force is what? Maximum. Do you understand? So the next thing I'm going to note is what? The angle of dip. You must note this. This is a jam question. The angle of dip is what? Is zero at the equator. Zero at the equator and what? 90 degrees are the magnetic poles of the earth. Is that clear? And we are going to measure the angle of dip with a dip what cycle. Now the next we are going to look at now is electromagnetic field. These are the formulas you need to check out for. These are the formulas you need to memorize. You need to put your head down to remember in case you see it in your exam. So let me explain them. The induced EMF in a straight wire carrying a conductor can be given in two ways, depending what we have. So EMF is equal to MAB omega, right? Or EMF is equal to BLV, okay? Where B is equal to magnetic field measured in Tesla, L is length, V is velocity, N is number of tons, A is area of, of coil, omega is angular speed, and theta is angle of what? Inclination. So if angle is given, you are going to include it here and say what? Sign what? Theta. But if angle is not given, you can solve it MAB omega, right? Now you're going to use this formula to solve for the induced EMF. If, if you have the number of tons in your question, area, magnetic field, and angular speed, right? But if only what you have is what? You have the magnetic field, the length, and the velocity. You're going to use this particular one. But the two formulas is going to give you the induced EMF. Then the next you're going to look at is what is transformers. The formulas you need to know in transform that comes out every single year is what? The EMF in the secondary coil over what? The EMF in the primary coil is equal to the number of tons in the secondary over the number of tons in the primary. Is that clear? Then it's also what? Equals to the current flowing in the primary coil by the current flowing in the secondary coil. Is that clear? So we have two types of transformers. You have what? Step up and what? Step down. So how do you know the difference between the step up 
and the step down transformers. So in step up transformers, the number of turns in the secondary is always what greater than the number of turns in the what primary coil. Exactly. While in the step down transformer, the number of coils in the primary is always greater than the number of coils in the what secondary coil. Is that clear? Now the next thing you need to know under this is what efficiency. The efficiency of a transformer is equal to the power in the secondary coil over what the power in the primary coil. They multiply by 100% because efficiency is expressed as a percentage, right? Okay, now this efficiency is also equal to the output power over the input power multiplied by 100%. Now, lastly, you need to know the energy stored in an inductor is equal to what? Half Li squared. What is the L? L means inductance of an inductor and I means what? Current. So a situation whereby they can connect this inductor in series simply by adding like series connection, okay? Then you square the current, you find half of it, and that becomes your answer. Please help me and share this video so you can get to other students that are preparing for this forthcoming exam. Yeah? Please, as you are watching this video, help me and share this video, okay? And tell me in the comment section how many people you have shared this video to. So let's continue. Now, this topic, simple AC circuit, is pata pata. Why I said is okay, pata pata is because Jam cannot do without bringing out questions from this topic. You have not observed. From 1980 till date, every single year there must be a question on AC circuit. So you must pay attention. Get your pen and paper if you have not been writing since and copy out this one. The first one I'm going to do is what? IRMS. That is called root mean square current. Root mean square current. Is it what's what? I not over what? Root 2. I not means peak current, okay? Or VRMS is equal to what? V not over what? Root 2. So this formula is a relationship connecting the root mean square and the peak values. The root mean square values and the peak what? Values. That is what? IRMS equals I not over root 2 or VRMS equals V not over root 2. I hope you get it. Okay, so let's go. Then there's also called instantaneous values instantaneous values of the current or of the what voltage so that is what the i is equal to i naught sine omega what t if you know that omega is 2 pi f we can now replace this here to have what i naught equals 2 pi f t now i have done a video on this topic in my channel so you can go and check it up to see how i solve problems involving this topic then we have vrms is equals what v naught sine omega t Replacing our omega with 2 pi f, we're going to have v naught sine 2 pi f t. I hope that is clear. All right, so the next thing you need to know is how to calculate power in this topic. How do you calculate power? Power is equal to i v cos what? Theta. Now, if the first angle is not given, you have to calculate power. Maybe you are not solving problems. You have to calculate power. Simply use what? i square r. i square r. Anytime you do not see the first angle, just use what? i square r. I hope that is clear. Alright, so let's go. The VRMS is equal to what? IRMS what? Z. Exactly. Now, you cannot just say VRMS is equal to I not Z. It is not what? Allowed. Anything that is here must be here because we are following Ohm's law. Okay? So VRMS equals to what? IRMS what? Z. I hope that is clear. Now, what does Z stand for? Z stands for what? Impedance. And what is an impedance? It is an overall resistance of a circuit containing what? Resistor, inductor, and what? Capacitor, right? So if we have the three of them in a circuit and they are connected in series, how do we get the effective impedance? The effective impedance is the root of R square plus XL minus XC or what? Squared, okay? Then also, Z is equal to root of R square plus XL square. That is only when you are dealing with resistor and inductor connected in what series. That is only when XZ is not what given. How to get your impedance is just to do this, okay? Now, when SL is not given, the impedance becomes root of R square plus XC square. That is when SL is not given. Hope you are taking notes. Now, what does this term stand for? Z is what? Impedance. SL is what? Inductive reactance. SC is capacitive reactance. R is resistance. Then IRMS is root mean square what? Current. Y, V0 is what? Peak voltage. If I say what of VRMS is what? Root mean square voltage. 
What of I know that is peak what? Current. I hope that is clear. Now look at this now. We need to know what SL and SC stands for. SL is 2 pi FL, okay? While SC is 1 over 2 pi FC. Please don't forget. And they're all measured in what? Ohms. Ohms, okay? Now, the last one is the effective or total voltage. What is the effective or total voltage? The effective or total voltage is what? V total is equal to the root of VR square plus VL minus VC all square. Similar way, the way we did that of what? Impedance. It's just the same thing. We're only replacing it with what? V, right? Okay, so what is VR? That is voltage across resistor. What is V? L, that is voltage across inductor. What is VC? That is voltage across capacitor, okay? So IR, ISL, and ISC. Just know that at resonance, maximum current is obtained. So as resonance is when SC equals SL. That is when capacitive reactance equals what? Inductive reactance, okay? So you should note this. At resonance, SL equals what? XC. Right. Then the resonance frequency, F0, is equals to 1 over 2 pi root of what? LC. At this resonance frequency, the impedance is equals what? R, right? At this point, we cannot say that what? VRMS is equals to IRMS what? R. This can only take place at resonance. I hope that is clear. So if you do all of this, you are sure that any question that comes out in simple AC circuits, that you can solve it. Analysis, we have two laws, okay? The only calculation you are going to expect from this electrolysis is from the first law. This says that what? M equals to ZQ. So what is Q? Q is the quantity of charge, which is equal to current multiplied by time, okay? Now, if you put it here, it becomes ZI what? Q. Is that clear? Now, that is the only thing that can ask you under this. Some questions can have different in what? In mass. But that difference in mass is also equals to Z I what T. Do you understand? Okay. Then I'm going to use this one to solve if you have the mass, the current, the time, and the electrochemical equivalent, right? But in some cases, you may be given the density, the area, and the thickness. And you have to get maybe the current or the thickness. So you're going to use what? Density area times thickness is equals what? Z I T. Do you understand? Okay, so we have M is what? The mass. Rho is density. A is area. D is thickness. Then we have current I as what? Current. T as time. And Z as electrochemical equivalent. So in as much as electrolysis is concerned, they cannot ask you questions excluding what I just gave you right now. So this formula is very, very what? Important. Then from the second law, we have the what? Mass of element A over mass of element B is equal to what? Electrochemical equivalent of A over electrochemical equivalent of what? B. This one is quite what? Simple. Really, they don't bring out questions from here, but I really need to show you in case you are writing a work. If you are able to memorize all of these formulas that I have listed out here in this video, you are comfortably going to score 90 and above without stress. If this video was able to help someone out there, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this same forthcoming exam can see it and learn from there. I will see you next time in the next episode. Bye for now.